Hello everybody. This is the tutorial for your immunology terms. And you might be wondering, well, how many terms are there in immunology? Well, if you actually look at all the material I did, you'd find out there's hundreds of terms. It's really rather overwhelming. So I did my best for picking out terms that I think will come up over and over again as you study immunology or as you go into medical fields. And as usual, I'm going to do a highlight of just a few of the terms here and leaving you with a plenty of time to get to work on your own using the Quizlet functions in order to become very interactive with these terms and really get to know them. So the first term I want to bring to your attention is antigen. The definition I gave you, as always, a more simplified definition, is any substance that triggers the production of an antibody and stimulates immune response. A simple thing to think about is when you have hay fever, a reaction to pollen. Pollen carries certain antigens on their surface that when they become, uh, when it comes into contact with your mucosal membrane, uh, begins the immune response as it stimulates uh, your immune system because these antigens, that's a lot of stumbling around to say it, wasn't it? And what I really wanted to get to is the point that this is one of the few words where understanding the roots might kind of lead you in the wrong direction. Anti against gen usually means something like production, but really the best way to think of it is antigen is a substance that triggers or stimulates production of your immune system. One of those times when it seems like the reverse makes more sense. So know that definition and you can't go wrong. Histamine is another worthwhile word to know. It's a chemical released as part of an immune response, which as part of what it does, it results in dilation of blood vessels. Now, if the histamines go crazy in your body, you can get too much dilation of blood vessels, too much leakage of fluids and swelling, and it can be a really bad thing. For most of us, the worst we encounter is a really stuffy head or maybe um, some swelling from mosquito bites or some other kind of thing that is ticking off our immune system. So antihistamines are over-the-counter medications, which can be very helpful in controlling unwanted immune responses. So, as I said, rather than going through each and every word, I'll leave you to do your interactives to make sure that you're getting the most out of this lesson. I'll leave you with a couple of little thoughts. What about our friend vaccine? Well, like I said, sometimes studying the origins, as fascinating as it is historically, uh, may not seem as modern usage. It comes from the word vaca or cow. Why do we do this? Well, historically, the first vaccine was made against cowpox. Uh, cowpox conferred some protection against smallpox, and then we learned to make smallpox vaccinations. It was a new concept to take a, um, a bit of an old lesion and introduce it into another person to stimulate an immune response. They didn't even really know why it was working when they first started this. But that is the origin of vaccine which we now use sort of as a standalone modern word. You can look up the definitions that I gave you. But I wouldn't be a biologist if I didn't bring up this one last little thing. There are a lot of people out there who call themselves anti-vaxxers. They've come to the conclusion that vaccinations cause more problems than they solve. Well, for this, I say I challenge you or them to a cemetery survey. My family cemetery in Alabama goes back to the mid-1800s. When you look at the mortality rate of children from the mid-1800s to about 1940, it's nearly 40% of the graves that are in that cemetery are people who are under the age of 10. Yet once we began giving vaccinations and having antibiotics as a tool, the mortality of people under the age of 10 dropped. There are very few children buried in that cemetery after 1940. So it's one of those little things you guys need to think about. Challenge these people to really examine the full meaning of anti-vaxxer and what the long-term consequences are. 
So enough of my preaching. Um, well, actually, it's not preaching. That's science. So at any rate, you guys have a good day, and I will continue making tutorials. Talk to you later.